When you pay a high price for a product, you're mostly paying for the marketing and the packaging of that product. For example, a brand like The Ordinary, which is super popular, they actually went the traditional route of word of mouth. So they don't actually do any advertising. They don't pay any influencers to just use word of mouth. And because their products are so affordable and so cheap, it actually worked in their favor. Hey guys, welcome to a new video. If you're new here, I am so happy to have you on my channel. My name is April, I'm a skincare and cosmetic chemist and I talk about all things skincare, back end, front end of all things skincare. So if you're interested in science-based skincare, hit that like button for me down below. Join the family because we're here every week talking about skincare. Today's video, I'm actually really happy to film. <laughs> I'm so happy to talk about today's video because there's been a movement of skincare influencers and skincare experts like the chemists, the dermatologists, and just everyone that's sort of in the skincare space. And it's just making me really, really happy. Leah Yu actually recently filmed a video about this. Susan Yara also filmed a video about this. So this is a really, really exciting video for me because I know that a lot of people have all these questions about all the information that's been put out. There's a lot of misinformation that's been put out about like skincare and skincare ingredients and just a lot of misinformation about skincare in general so I'm so happy about this collaboration between these two units in the skincare space to help you know blur the lines a little bit in the skincare space on the YouTube platform so this video might seem like it's going against everything I've sort of said in like my videos in the past about ingredients and stuff and I I, I get it you know I've, I've preached on this channel about like how ingredients matter and yes ingredients matter but in this video I do want to tell you guys that dose matters more than ingredients matter in Leah Yu's video she walked you guys through all these different things that matter when it comes to formulating products so yes everything she said in that video is true the source and quality of raw materials matter when it comes to formulating products a lot of times we've had to toss out products that are made from different manufacturers i remember this particular time the senior chemist had made two different batches of like a soap and one of them was a little darker than the other so then we had to dump out the one that was a little darker because she wanted it lighter so we had to wait like months and order from the same exact manufacturer that gave us the one that was a little lighter than the other one before we could proceed to making that batch on like a bigger scale so source of raw materials really matter and that's just like one instance out of like a million instances that this has happened at work where we've had to wait months you know waiting for products from Germany from South America before we can proceed to making a mass huge production batch so source of raw materials really matter the next point I have here is a tank that's used to actually manufacture these products so believe it or not if the tank is malfunctioning if the homogenizer in the tank is broken or the sweep or the impeller is broken it'll produce a whole entire different batch than the one that you probably produced before so condition of the tank really matters most importantly every time you scale up from like the beaker level like in the lab to like maybe like a pilot batch every time you scale up to that a lot of times the specific analysis changes so things like the pH the viscosity could change because you're using an entirely different material which is the tank that has is made up of different materials different from what is used to make a beaker so those things are really important when it comes to making a batch another thing is who makes the batch so so important oh my god this is so true so we have one guy in my lab that makes like pretty much all the pilot batches which I don't know if you guys have watched my previous videos but I do work as like a middleman between the R&D department and like the mass scale production so we make the batches from like the lab in like a smaller scale and then we take it up to mass production if the if the batch is successful so we have this one guy that makes all of the pilot batches and sometimes obviously he takes off work or vacation or whatever and we have another guy make the pilot batches and the numbers are completely different you guys like so different so it's really really important um, who makes the batch to determine what you see in a final product in a formula think about like mixing and formulating as like cooking if you have like a chef cook something a different chef cooks it it'll probably taste very different if you use different um, ingredients from different suppliers like if you use African ingredients I'm just making up arbitrary terms here but if you use like african ingredients versus american ingredients it'll probably taste different okay cameroon pepper versus american pepper it'll probably have a different taste so think about it like that formulating products is deeper than ingredients and i know that i talk about ingredients all the time here and i talk about how ingredients are important very very important but most importantly these factors are also just as important so another thing i want to talk about is the fda has approved percentages when it comes to allergens in the u.s there's certain products if they're used above a certain threshold that has to be listed in the ingredient list in the uk there's 26 allergens that must be listed if used in a product to inform consumers that they're used in a product so the consumer is not unaware of this i have from the video about the rules and regulations on products in the u.s and the uk which i will link up here so definitely check that out if you're interested when you look at an ingredient list there's three different types 
types of ingredients. There's the ingredients that are functional, which is the active ingredients, so your niacinamide or your uh, salicylic acid. Then there is aesthetic ingredients. Aesthetic ingredients are basically ingredients that help the product feel good on the skin. So like things like alcohol, just ingredients that make the product just feel really, really good on the skin and it's not rough or bumpy on the skin. Then the final set of ingredients are ingredients that are used for marketing. Literally, a marketing team sits down after we make a product and we talk about what we would use, you know, to get the consumer to buy the product, to get the consumer interested in the product because every company tries to set themselves apart. And when you mention something that a consumer product probably hasn't seen before or the product consumer, you know, was already interested in, you will probably pay attention to that product, right? I was actually listening to the Beauty Brains podcast, which is a beauty podcast between two chemists. And I really, really enjoy that podcast. Actually, speaking of podcasts, if you guys want me to do a video about like my favorite podcast, please like the video or comment down below and I will do that. I have so many podcasts I listen to that absolutely you know, make me a better chemist and really teach me a lot about this space. Just know that there's three types of ingredients in a formula. Usually the actives would be the first few ingredients you see on the list. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is that when you pay a high price for a product, you're mostly paying for the marketing and the packaging of that product. So for example, a brand like The Ordinary, which is super popular, they actually went the traditional route of word of mouth. So they don't actually do any advertising. They don't pay any influencers. They just use word of mouth. And because their products are so affordable and so cheap, it actually worked in their favor. A lot of the times brands don't like to do this because this is a gamble strategy. It could work for you, could work against you. So most brands just go the route of getting influencers or celebrities to market their product for them or actually get like a budget to advertise their products. So that's definitely something to know. The last thing I want to say is a lot of ingredients serve multiple different purposes. For example, citric acid can serve as an AHA or as a pH stabilizer in a product. So many other ingredients also act in this manner. If you take anything away from this video, remember that dosage matters more than ingredients. Ingredients definitely matter, especially if you have a sensitivity or if you have uh, some sort of allergy to these ingredients. That's why you should try to buy from brands that have like a huge uh, budget that can pay R&D because these brands pay a lot of money to get their R&D department to make the best of the best products in the market. Yeah, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed it and hit your post notification videos if you want to see more skincare videos from me. I'm here every week talking about skincare. If you have any questions about the cosmetic chemistry industry, definitely leave them down below. I'll be happy to answer them. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.